that I expected. Um, <clears throat> someone, um, let's start naming some entities. Someone want to shout out an entity or two? Branch. Branch. Okay. Customers. Order, okay. Okay. Toppings, okay. Okay. Crust, okay. Anything else? Okay. We'll call that order type. The delivery method, order type, any of those would be good terms for it. Other entities. Wow. This has potential. Those would be the identical entities that I would come up with. And again, remember that if we were to go and circle the nouns in the, all these statements, they would form the entities. Now, that's not a guarantee. It won't always necessarily be like that. All right. Remember, anytime you're given information uh, about a database structure, it can be about a new entity, it can be about a relationship between entities, or it can be about attributes. All right. And in this particular case, um, you failed all the entities. All right. Relationships between these entities. Someone yell some of these out. Good, we have something to talk about. I'm going to put a question mark here. Okay, because I want to talk about that. Other. One branch to many orders. One branch to many orders. And a, yeah, and a, but an order is to one branch. Okay. All right. What about between customer and order? One customer should go to many orders, and a given order is only for one customer. Now. You had a relationship between branch and customer. And let's think about it for a second. All right. Okay, we thought about it. No. <laughs> let's think about it for a second. How do we know if a person, if a customer, has a relationship with a branch? If they ordered from there before, right? In other words, yeah, I may have my two or three favorite branches of Marco's Pizza, right? Maybe, um, maybe um, you know, one uh, that's close to my home, maybe one that's close to where I work, all right? Or maybe, you know, over a friend's house, you know, that I've ordered or whatever, all right? But the point is, is it's not, unless I've ordered from that branch, you wouldn't say I have a relationship to them, really. All right. The relationship to a branch is based on the order. And therefore, if I wanted to know all the branches to, to send coupons to me, well, I would look at the orders and send coupons that way. If, let's say, a particular branch was having a special on something, how would they know who their customers were? By looking back at the orders. So therefore, I would sort of call that like a derivable relationship. Yeah, in, in, in human conversation, you can say, hey, that's my Marcos branch, all right? And you could think that maybe I have uh, a relationship with the branch, and, and maybe we need to implement that in the database. But in reality, it's probably more true that really the branches you have a relationship with are the ones that you've ordered with. So you probably don't need to implement that. If you did implement that, it would be a many-to-many, -many, and then how would you gather that data? 
to know. And you'd gather that data probably based on what they ordered anyhow. So really, I would not implement the relationship between branch and customer and instead simply say, hey, my customers, a branch's customers are who they've ordered from. All right, and, and get it that way. All right. Um, another relationship. Okay, order type to order. Now, why not instead simply have an order type as an attribute in the pizza table? Why have a separate table for order type? I'm playing the devil's advocate here. Would it be a normalized table? I don't know if that's the case. Okay, that's true. That's true. Okay. Really, the reason that we create a foreign key here and create a table is really because we want to be sure that we're consistent about defining what the order types are. If there was just a plain text field in the order table, then someone could type in pick up as one word. Someone could type in pick up as pick space up. Someone could type in uh, pick up as pick dash up. Someone could put in delivery. Someone could abbreviate it with a D, you know, for delivery, and so on. If it was just an attribute of the order table, then there'd be no guarantee that we had any level of consistency between how the data was entered. And therefore, if we wanted to do any sort of analysis on our orders, you know, try to determine how many pickups versus deliveries, all right, that would be difficult to do. If instead we define a table that contains a list of allowable order types and create a foreign key there, they can only pick the two things that we put in there. And as was stated, if that later expands to add for dine-in or special express delivery, pay two bucks more and we'll get it to you within, you know, before the commercial's over or whatever, all right, then we would simply add those to the, the, the order type file. Now, some students, when, um, when um, posed with this problem, have said, why not just have a yes or no question, a Boolean it's called, to say delivery, yes or no, all right? That's not a half bad answer, but it doesn't allow for the expansion, all right? If you were sure that it was always a yes or no question, then that's fine. But by throwing in the possibility that we could be doing dine in at some point, it won't always be a yes or no question, all right? Because then it'll be delivery, yes, delivery, no, because pick up, delivery, no, because it's dine in. All right. So you're going to see a lot of little tables like this in almost any database. Sometimes they're called code tables. And really, the same thing is true for crust, crust, and size, right? We could make simply an attribute in the pizza table for crust and for size, but then people could type in anything, you know, could type in thin, thick, traditional, and you might not know. Uh, you wouldn't have any level of consistency with that. All right, other relationships in this. One order to many pizza. And each pizza appears on only one order. Now, one thing you guys did, and again, it's correct, but you set up that pizza table to contain specific pizzas that one person orders. In other words, you don't have in there sort of a generic list of all the pizzas that people could order, like pepperoni pizza or whatever. Why? Because there's simply too many combinations. You can't do that. If this was like a Pizza Hut Express where there was only two or three items that you could have, you could have a table for each of the three items and then um, say that the order has that. But you're right, each one of these pizzas is the pizza that someone specifically ordered that pizza. 
And there's far too many combinations between toppings and crusts and, and uh, size for you to sort of define those pizzas in advance and have this sort of the generic pizza available table. All right. Um, that does point out, though, uh, other class in the past have taken that approach or have tried to take that approach. Um, that is important to make sure that you've defined your terms and define that in this case when we're talking about pizza, we mean one pizza that someone specifically orders as opposed to like a generic type of pizza, like a thin crust pepperoni that many people could be ordering. You know, only one person can order a pizza in this scenario. A pizza can only be on one order. You're not going to take the pizza delivered to me, take that same pizza delivered to someone else. Yes? Yes. Well, one order can have many pizzas. A given pizza is going to be on how many orders? Only one. So it's a one to many. It would become a many to many if instead of sort of like a make your own pizza where you say all the toppings and all the th your choices, if there was in here say a product table and the product table had, you know, product one was a small pepperoni pizza. Maybe you've seen like at the zoo, uh, they have the Pizza Hut Express where you can only get like two or three things, you know, and they can, um, they define those in advance. Um, small Supreme. If that was the case, then this small pepperoni isn't the small pepperoni that I specifically asked for. It's just the fact that they have small pepperoni pizzas available here. Then this would be a many to many relationship because then I could place an order for a small pepperoni and you could place an order for a small pepperoni. So if we're defining pizza as a generic pizza, all right, that many people can order one like it, then you're right, it would be a many to many. However, in this case I think it more, makes more sense to define this as a specific pizza that someone ordered because I can't easily come up with this list of products that are available, right? Um, because if you consider all the toppings that are available and the crust options and the size options, there's a lot of different options that you could have. So in that case, this is going to represent the individual pizza that I ordered and it's unique, it's made just for me and therefore... Um, all the way around. Remember that the many side points to the one side. So I could call an order a pepperoni and a cheese pizza. I order two pizzas. And let's say my order number is order number one, two, three. Then there'd be a pizza that was, you know, large, pepperoni, whatever, that would have an order number of one, two, and three. And then the second pizza would also have an order number of one, two, three. No, there would be no pizzas in the order table. What would be in the order table then? Well, the things that were distinct about the order. In other words, what branch it was placed at, all right, um, what customer it's for, maybe the time that the, the order was placed, the day and time that it was placed, what the delivery type was for it. All those things are attributes of the order. What we'll do after we finish the relationships is we'll run down the, the attributes that would be in each of these tables to make sure that we, we follow that. All right. But yeah, that's a good point. The, the, the order actually contains sort of just header information. Stuff that's true for the whole order. You know, The whole order is either pick up or delivery. You know, you're not going to call and say, well, I'll tell you what, deliver the pepperoni pizza, but I'll come in and get the cheese pizza. All right. Nor will you call, <laughs> will you call the Illyria branch for your pepperoni pizza and on the same order say, by the way, I want the Amherst branch to deliver me. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. Those things are characteristics of the order. Okay, other relationships. Between, how about between pizza and size and between pizza and crust? One to many. A pizza has one size. 
A given size, though, there can be multiple pizzas. So there can be a bunch of large pizzas made. Likewise with crust. What about between pizza and toppings? Yes. Well, again, that, that, that comes to how we're defining pizza. If we're defining pizza as the specific pizza that I'm ordering, it only comes in one size, the size that I ordered. All right. If we're talking about a generic pepperoni pizza, then you could have a small pepperoni and a large pepperoni. But we've decided that this represents the pizza that, that actually is delivered and gets eaten as opposed to sort of a, a category of pizzas. All right? But yeah, in that case, one given pizza only has one kind of crust. One given pizza only has one kind of size. Yet, a given size, there can be many pizzas for that size. There can be many pizzas for that crust. What about between toppings and pizza? Many to many. And this is where we match up what pizzas has what toppings. So, let's run down the, yeah, go ahead. All right, if, uh, if we're ordering a specific pizza that we're going to have to deliver to the end of the day, then we need to have a toppings. Well, the difference is, is I can only choose one crust. Right. But I can choose multiple toppings. Right? In other words, let's let's look at let's let's uh, look at what's in uh, these three tables to start out with. The pizza table will have a pizza ID number. All right, it will have some other attributes. We'll skip those for now. All right. One of the th one of the attributes that we'll have is it'll have the order number that it belongs to, or the order ID. It'll have the crust ID, the ID of the crust that it has. It'll have the ID of the size that it has. All right. In this table, in the toppings table, will be the topping ID and the, the name of the topping. So, the first row in the topping table might be row one with a topping ID of one might be pepperoni. Topping ID two might be mushrooms. Type, topping ID three might be sausage. So if I call and I order a pizza and I say I want a pizza with pepperoni and sausage on it, all right, let's say my pizza ID is one, two, three, and I have my order number's in there, and I have my si uh, crust and size number in there. In the topping pizza table, it will say it'll say that for pizza one, two, three, I want pepperoni, and for pizza one, two, three, I also want sausage. So we'll have the pizza ID and the topping ID. All right. So the topping ID has a list of all the toppings that are available in my store. The pizza ID, the pizza table has the pizzas that people are ordering and they're getting delivered or picking up. All right. The topping pizza table, what that does is that matches them up. This pizza gets this topping and this topping, so there'll be two rows in this table: one for pepperoni, one for sausage, I think. So that should be a three. All right. If someone ordered something with mushrooms and sausage, then the next pizza would have two and three, and so on down the line. And that's what accomplishes the many to many. Now, crust and size are different because, again, a pizza only has one crust. So, like, in the crust table, if you had, you might have a crust ID and the crust name, and maybe one is thick and two is thin. All right. A pizza can only be either a thick crust or a thin crust. 
So there can be only one crust ID in here. So if I want a thick crust, I put a one in there. If I want a thin crust, I put a two in there. Likewise with size. It can either be just small, medium, or large. All right. Um, interestingly enough, we're out of time. All right. Um, can we spend maybe three more minutes writing down tables and attributes? Does anyone mind? Yeah. Let's go and do that just to have some kind of completion, and then maybe uh, we'll, we'll look at an access uh, next time. So let's draw up our, our tables. The branch table, again, we'll have a branch ID. We'll probably have the branch name. We'll have the address, city, state, and zip. The customer will likely have the same sort of stuff in. We'll have a customer ID. The customer name. Address, city, state, and zip. The order table will have an order number or an order ID, which is the primary key. It'll have the branch ID as a foreign key, a customer number as a foreign key, probably the date and time that it was placed, the order was placed, and the order type ID, which again will indicate whether it's pickup or delivery. So those are all the things that are true about the order. As I said, an order is for one customer, an order is for one branch, and an order we either want picked up or delivered in total. The order type table will then have an order type ID as a primary key, and maybe an order type description Then the other ones we sort of had, but just to write them on the same sheet, our pizza table will have a pizza ID, primary key. We'll contain an order ID, which will be a foreign key. We'll have a size ID, foreign key. Crust ID, foreign key. Size and crust table, we'll have a size ID and size name. Crust ID and crust name. Finally, we'll have a topping table that will have a topping ID and a topping name. And lastly, we will have the pizza topping table that will have the pizza ID and the topping ID together being the, the primary key. And also each of these will be foreign keys to the respective table. So that's, in a nutshell, the database that we have. Again, a few things to uh, uh, review from this. One of the points is, again, when you're talking about even words that are common, make sure you understand what they mean. In other words, pizza being an individual pizza or pizza being a kind of pizza that can be ordered. That's significant because that will affect the relationship uh, of how you do it. So make sure, even if they're understandable terms, make sure it's clearly identified what it is. Because if we're talking about an individual pizza, yeah, then it's associated with an order. If we're talking about a category of pizza, then no, it's not associated with an order. If you had both, like a Hawaiian pizza and then a pizza you could make yourself, would be a whole separate table? Oh, that's a good question. What if you had, what if you had something like a Hawaiian pizza that came with a predefined set of toppings and then in addition you could order piecemeal and say I want this topping, this topping. What would you do? What would you do? I would probably cheat in that case 
and I would probably define a topping that was really a that really was like the Hawaiian topping that really consists of a couple other toppings. The purist on a database level would say that that's probably not a good idea because you're sort of lying because Hawaiian isn't a topping. <laughs> you know, pineapple's a topping, ham's a topping, but pine. I guess you could make a topping and call it pineapple and ham. It's a group of toppings. Yeah, uh, I would probably cheat and, and make that combination of toppings look as though it was a topping and do it that way. Just call it Hawaiian topping? Uh, Hawaiian topping, yeah. Because conceivably someone could say I want a Hawaiian topping with uh, bacon on it too. You know, I guess. You know, but that's, that's a good question. Or, you know, I know some places like have like the meat lover's pizza. You know, that would be uh, a, another possibility. I guess what you could do if you're doing that maybe the better purest solution would be yeah, more or less what you said. Have, have an order linked to a custom pizza and then have what would we call this a, a pre-defined pizza yeah specialty pizza and It would look like that. That the custom pizza is made just for you, so you're the only one that's getting it. The specialty pizza a bunch of people could order. So, so. if you ordered a specialty pizza with double cheese, <laughs> that would ruin it. Imagine uh, you ordered a double cheese. Oh, man. Uh, wow, that's a good one. The question is, what if you wanted a specialty pizza with... Uh, extra toppings beyond the, you know, do you want to use especially pizza as the base and then add toppings on? I think then we're back to maybe the better solution would be just call meat lovers a topping, even though it's actually a combination of toppings. So, <laughs> uh, design databases is tricky and it's always these, we call these edge cases, you know. The, the, the average sort of thing of uh, I'm calling in and ordering a pepperoni pizza. Yeah, we can design a database to do that. But when you start throwing in all these weird exceptional cases or, you know, uh, you know, I want a pizza without sauce on it, you know, or something goofy like that, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Uh, I guess at some point you have to identify how relevant it is to track that data. Could you handle something like that via special instructions, for example, to say, hey, don't put any sauce on this or light on the sauce or whatever. You know, remember your database is a model. A model doesn't have to capture everything about the real situation. It just has to capture what's relevant for whatever purpose you're, ha you're having. We'll talk about a little bit more about this uh, next Tuesday and we will also um, talk about review for the midterm. And the one thing I do want to be sure we talk about is talk about how an organization might use this data. All right, yeah. We're, we're keeping track of it so the chef knows how many pieces to make and so the delivery guy knows, need, knows where to deliver. But could they use it for more than that? How many to order? Exactly. How many toppings to order? Sending coupons out? I swear, every Friday I get an email from Marcos, like a good friend. I, I hear from Marcos more than I hear from some of my closest friends, all right, saying, yeah, have you thought about dinner today, <laughs> you know? We're running a nice little special on, and you know, there's probably a good chance that they've looked at my order history and come up with a coupon that's based on what I typically order. And I don't know if they just send those out every Friday to everyone, but you know, Friday is traditionally pizza day in our household, so I don't know. Maybe if you ate pizza on Monday, you get your email on Monday. I don't know. But it's just interesting to see how you can have a database for one problem, but if you develop it correctly, you can extend that and apply that to, to other aspects of your business. So let's at least touch on that uh, on Monday, or not Monday, Tuesday again. All right, we'll see you over in lab.